I'll just wait for her. Uh, Welcome everyone to the uh, Committee of the Whole meeting for January the 26th, 2016. If you guys are here to discuss sewage treatment, you are out of luck. This is purely finance <laughs> and a much better subject, <laughs> something we might all agree on actually. Uh, so welcome. Uh, we have an agenda tonight. Um, there are a couple of presentations that uh, will not be made because of illness, but there's some additional information uh, that was sent in front of us. So um, with that, can I have an, immoval, uh, an approval of the agenda, please? So moved. A mover. Yep. Just wondering uh, if we, uh, I thought maybe we needed to add IACTI to the agenda. Is that still needed? Yes, so you could do that. I was going to address it in my opening remarks. Okay, so we can add that as uh, 2.16. Okay. okay, any further discussion? With that one addition, seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Uh, first item is uh, a summary from our Director of Finance, Andrea. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. So, distributed this evening uh, to the public and also to council members there is a summary sheet and also for each application uh, there is a one-page summary of the application and then council has also been distributed electronically with all of the details of the application and I just wanted to review the process of um, what we're going to be doing this evening I did poll council prior to the meeting tonight to determine if you wanted to require presentations from everyone who uh, was asking for a grant or whether you were fine with just looking at the paper applications or whether we did a bit of a mix in terms of those people who had never received a grant before doing a presentation. So what we decided after I heard from each one of you was that we would require, uh, there was two applicants who had not received a grant before that we would definitely want them to present so council could hear your information. And then we also gave the option for those other people who have received grants before, if they you know, would like to do a presentation, that they have the option. So when the dust settled, uh, there's a very bad flu going around, I think, and several of our presenters are not here this evening. So for council's reference, um, at this point, we're expecting someone from Belmont School, and we're expecting someone from Juan de Fuca Performing Arts Center, are they in the audience? Yep. And we're present, uh, expecting someone from the West Shore Arts Council. And does that account for everyone who's here the, this evening uh, representing a group or is there anyone else? Okay. Great of it. Okay, so we've got, um, are you folks doing presentations? You don't have to, I'm just... Okay. Okay, perfect. Excellent. So just sort of establishing who's here tonight and who will or will not be doing presentations. We had the Coast Collective, Cindy Moyer, um, canceled due to flu, and also the Victoria Compost Education Centre. Um, I think this was a late cancellation again due to flu, and it was such a, a last-minute cancellation, she was unable to be here. So that's basically the plan this evening is that um, I've talked to our chair and recommended that council may want to go through here and uh, hear from the folks who are here to do presentations first and then you can deliberate on the total package of applications. 
The one thing I'd like you to think about, and you can decide at the end of the, um, the presentations, is what amount of budget you would like to set for this this year. So for your information, last year we had $27,050, which was the budget. And in addition to that, we awarded $1,200 to IACT as basically part of our grant aid process, but as a line item. So this evening, um, I will leave it up to council to decide on the funding envelope, I'm going to call it. If you wanted to, I can give you an example. If the budget was 27050 for these individual uh, grants, you may want to increase it by 2% as an example. That would give you a budget of 27600 And you may wish to perhaps not award it all this evening. In past years, we've sometimes held back 10 to 15% in case there are any late applications. So if you can think about that as, as we're going through the deliberations. So the spreadsheets that you have in front of you basically list uh, in alphabetical order the organization's name, the applicant's name, purpose, and you have received all of the backup information. There's a column there of what's been requested this year versus what was approved for the past two years. And last year the process we followed is um, council heard from the applicants, reviewed the different applications, and then basically decided how much money they were going to spend and voted that expenditure, you might say, individually. So you can take your budgeted amount and uh, award it as you see fit. Is there any questions on that? Nope. Nope, you guys are getting to be pros at this. Okay, so having said that, I'll turn it back to you, Mr. Chair, and you may want to start with the first application. Thank you very much. And just in summary, um, we're making the assumption that all of committee have read this, the individual summary, so we will not be going through each summary. Um, however, if you have questions, of course, feel free, but we will uh, open up the floor to those that uh, want to make a presentation. Uh, so with that in mind, we'll uh, start off with the Belmont School and Royal Bay School Prom Safe Grad, uh, Darlene. So remember, um, five minute time limit and then the hook comes, and uh, go for it. have become so supportive over the years. Royal Bay and Belmont have come together for some of our special events. We're very pleased to be able to do this with our West Shore community as there are no boundaries with our youth. We believe by pooling our resources and asking community partners as one group, it may take the pressure off all our wonderful supporting groups and businesses. We're mindful of trying to make our resources go as far as possible and work closely with the PACs and schools to find ways of cutting costs and finding sponsorships and engaging our families. Our event starts with the group photo at Royal Road and moves to City Centre, where we work in conjunction with our local RCMP to welcome the grads and guests. And then at 5 o'clock, it's all opened up. The kids sit down to a formal meal in a beautifully decorated setting and then they have a dance, casino, free limo rides for the attending grads and guests. At 11.30, the prom ends and safe grad begins. The rest of the city center is opened and many activities start and continue through the night. The grads and guests are fed again at midnight and also for breakfast. We utilize about 100 volunteers and many of us are there from 7 a.m. in the morning till 7 a.m. the next morning. Each year we sit down and talk about what worked well and what was a challenge, so we're able to fine tune it each time. We'd like to thank the City of Colwood for all their support over the years and hope we can look forward to their continued support. Thank you very much. It, this 
this year with the first um, yeah. graduation for both schools. That's yeah. great. Great. Are there any questions? Committee? Uh, Cynthia. I just want to confirm, I'm assuming you're doing one dry grad for both schools. Yeah. Is that right? Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Rob? Sorry, yeah, could you maybe just give a, a brief, <clears throat> really brief uh, description? Uh, last year, basically, Colwood, we, we were able to give you a thousand or to that committee. And this year, I know you're requesting four. And I'm just wondering if you can help me understand the difference. Why, why it's different? Well, we're trying to bring up the amount that we're requesting for a few reasons. Um, we know that this year, you have two paths. And in the This year, because of the two schools separating, um, the amount of attendance has gone up dramatically in both schools. And each school is funded per student with gaming funds. The PACs use those gaming funds to help us support it. And because the numbers rose up so high compared to last year, we weren't able to fund as much stuff. Um, I only know this because voted in as PAC president this year. So all the money we received came to Belmont, Royal Bayview, Paula Library, because they weren't running last year. So Belmont split the gaming fund 60-40 and gave Royal Bay 40%. Gotcha. And 60% based on student population. But even with that, the population base was around $700, like 700 students difference. Like it was a huge financial difference. So I am not expecting the PACs to be able to fund any of the conferences for us. Um, yeah, that's part of it. And, and the cost of staff. And we also, every year we seem to have more and more students that can't afford to pay for the ticket. Part of our budget is covering everything so that no one gets excluded. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we will move on. Um, I don't think there's anybody from Big Brothers here. Um, bipolar disorder. Coast Collective. I know um, Cindy's got the flu, unfortunately. Um, however, I think there there was something here, wasn't there? No, from the post. Okay. Um, Communica Dialogue and Resolution Services Society. No. Crisis in, uh, Intervention and Public Information Society. No. Fort Rod Hill. Um, Greater Victoria Bike to Work Society. Uh, Frank, you're m most welcome to make a presentation or uh, if you're just available for, uh, for questions, it's up to you. Since our inception in 1997, we have uh, convinced 13,500 people to vote for the first time, uh, including another 1,500 this past year. So um, it's our 22nd annual bike to work day, which will take your place on May 30th to May 5th. Um, we have a planning celebration station. Um, the town of Alden uh, urges that we have a Christmas trail, which has been very successful. Um, I have felt some approved budget statements um, when I came to the meeting today. They, when, I, when we submitted the application, they weren't ready because our treasurer was out on a stay all day. So the approved ones came due in, in December. So I, I apologize for not getting them to you sooner. Um, you'll find, though, that when you look at the financial statements, that 
In 2014, we were the successful bidder on a bike skills program with the CRD, and it was for a $70,000 grant. Uh, we successfully completed that, and uh, it looks like we have a whole lot of money, but we actually incurred a few costs. I think about a $22,000 grant. It was about 30 communications, which we've been using as we went through the program. Um, uh, we certainly would, would have really appreciated uh, your support on that issue. Um, I put the numbers in the, the, the agreement that the number of total residents in the city that take part. Um, uh, 2015 team leaders indicated a location. 12 teams uh, consisted of 137 uh, cyclists, and then the list goes away from Florida. Uh, these teams include the city of Florida, Fort Lauderdale, Montecito Library, West Shore High School, Oroville University, School of Business and Technology. <coughs> Thank you, Frank. Uh, committee? Seeing none, get better. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I don't believe anybody from the, uh, oh, the Greater Victoria Volunteer Society. Yep. That's you, perfect. Can, we, uh, can I just trouble you to use the mic? We're just recording the meeting oh, for minutes. Oh, pardon me. Stuff. All right. Yeah, um, thank you. Um, well, I won't start at, at no. the beginning. And it's the okay. Time. <laughs> uh, I was saying uh, on behalf of our executive director, I, I wanted to bring a message of gratitude. We're grateful for your past support of Volunteer Victoria. Um, your contribution of a grant and aid allows us to do our work. And if I had to quickly summarize our work, I'm a relatively new employee of the Volunteer Victoria. My name is George Lucy. Uh, but I see our work as quality of life enhancement. We work with about 340 member agencies. Many of them are in Colwood, uh, Swifty Foods, Royal Road, uh, Fort Rod Hill, Unica. There are a number of our members that are in the Colwood area, and our membership in general are all who's looking to volunteer to support their mission, vision, and mandate, and we work to match volunteers with meaningful volunteer opportunities in the interest of their quality of life enhancement, and I'd, I'd like to thank overall community's quality of life enhancement given the mission, vision, and mandate of the organization. So really, we are grateful for your past support, and thank you very much for considering this year's application. Um, if there are any questions, I'll try my best, but I really wasn't the architect of the um, grant. Great. Thank you, George. I'll open it up to uh, committee. I know I know committee's quite familiar with, uh, with the society, because I think we've... Well, thank you. Yeah. Much. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Next is uh, Juan de Fuca Performing Arts Society, and we have a presentation. Name and address for the record. No, just Good evening. <laughs> I'm Christine Pitts. <laughs> 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 Some of you may recognize me from when I'm back on the mic. Uh, my name is Stuart Collington. I'm the director of the Juan de Fuca Performing Arts Centre Society, and I have with me tonight Christine Pate, um, who's the director of the Society, and Gloria Davis, who's also the director of Arts Council, and Mr. Julian Sanders as well. So, this is a project that the council is very familiar with because we've been supportive of the Vermont Civil Liberties for some time, um, in particular funding the 2013 Asia China report, which you've all read and have read, um, which has been very fundamental in moving this project forward. Um, so we formed this new society, the Wonder Fuqua Performing Arts Centre Society, to kind of basically pick up the ball from where we left off on the Ship China report and to kind of try and um, move it forward. So we're working with the West Shore Arts Council. Um, we've been um, working with the community for landowners to discuss on site possibilities. We've been doing some research, um, including up to the Government of Port Georgia in Nanaimo, to discuss how they might get their proposals um, before to work. And reconnecting with the arts and cultural groups in the region. At the end of February, we are going to be hosting a forum which kind of pulls all of these groups back together again, and you guys should all have an invitation in front of you, and I hope some or even many or even all of you will be able to attend. So, second session of the presentation paper. Um, so, our focus this year is the, the kind of serious uh, groundwork. Um, the Shikshina report is a really good way of 
providing that information to it, and that we bring forward an opportunity for the people that don't speak English to actually be able to have spoken to them and not to think that they have a badge and kind of get to know their story. Um, so the, the funding that we're collecting kind of helps to support the kind of the society and the communications piece, um, but we're also very much an ongoing fundraising trying to get the money together to, to do that and put it on the business plan. We know that this is a project um, that sort of is a potentially an important driver in the forward economic development in social fabric. We know it has public support, and as we talk to community leaders and the residents again and time and time again, this is a needed facility. Not ju <coughs> excuse me, not just for the arts groups, but obviously for, for other large groups who want the space to do stuff. Um, we have this very small financial request this year. It's only twenty four hundred of the thirty five hundred money. Um, and just to note, we didn't actually, this project didn't actually get funding from the forward last year. The 5,000 was in the budget, I believe, as a hangover from the, the year before. Um, so we're also applying for the, you know, other offshore funds to help get it forward. <coughs> the art community, I mean, it's interesting, you're seeing a, a lot of arts applications in front of you. I think it's an indication that the arts community is really growing out here in the West Shore. Um, you're seeing applications from West Shore Arts Council, from the Coast Collective, um, and from, from others. And I would encourage you to see these as sort of complementary arts, not competing. I think the kind of work that they do at a very similar end. It's an opportunity for the community to participate. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Judith. I'll uh, open it up to committee. No? Thank you very much. I don't see uh, the Royal Canadian Legion here. Uh, and then we have Kathleen Gilbert from the Vancouver Island uh, South Film and Media Commission. Great, I was wondering who snuck in. Perfect. <laughs> well, I used to live in Fallwood. It used to take me 20 minutes. I left downtown at 5 o'clock, so I do apologize for being late. And well. I'm surprised it's gotten that much worse. But um, thank you very much again this year for inviting me to come and speak. Perfect high, the devout, the boy, the liquidator, monkey up, play date, last resort, one degree closer, the gourmet detective one and two, the people garden, unreal, hell on wheels one and hell on wheels two, girl in the photograph, the great Canadian cookbook, just in time for Christmas, signed, sealed, and delivered, four wheels, 1491, stranger in the house, pup stars, the bridge one and two, gourmet detective four. These are just some of the projects that the Film Commission brought into the CRD last year in 2015, making it uh, a record-breaking year and uh, having over 24 productions choosing the, uh, the CRD as, um, as their main location. We brought in over $90 million uh, of direct spend and that, as I've mentioned to you in past years, is money taken directly out of producers' pockets and spent on things like office furniture, building supplies, hotels, restaurants, rental cars, uh, and numerous other items, uh, That's uh, and wages, of course. And of course, that does not include any multiplier, that's $19 million of direct spend. They also used over 20,000 uh, hotel nights last year alone. So um, these productions created also hundreds of jobs, and many of those um, uh, crew members do live in the Calder area. We um, were able, for the first time, to keep our crew in Victoria. So many of them for the first time in probably 10 years were able to stay, live, and work in the communities that they love. And that was thanks to us bringing in all of these productions. And we were also able to train a lot of people. We probably have about 200 new crew people that have been added to our crew database um, just since Grace Point, because Grace Point and the boy and some of the other bigger productions that came into the CRD helped to train a lot of people. Now these aren't, you know, the big um, eighty thousand, one hundred and twenty thousand dollar a year jobs. These are entry level positions that we created last year, but they will eventually become those big eighty, one hundred and twenty thousand dollar a year jobs that uh, that this industry uh, creates. Last year, we also had several public educational workshops, such as how to get to work in the film industry, how to be an extra in the film industry, how to register your home or business as a film location, 
We also had our annual producers roundtable, uh, which was attended by a record number of people because we're also uh, uh, being able to attract new producers and make new local producers. So that was very exciting for last year. We worked very hard at the Film Commission to ensure that every dollar of taxpayers' money that we receive is spent with great care and consideration towards increasing economic development and jobs for local residents. So I don't really have much more than that to tell you, just that it was a very exciting year. Um, uh, the, the downside of it is we became so busy that we are now uh, in need of an extra person. So we're trying to raise, uh, and we've lost our free office space. The chamber gave us free office space for five years, but unfortunately they needed that space because they too are growing. So we now are having to pay, even though the province gives us a really good deal, we still do have to pay rent and we need uh, extra money. So um, we are going to the community to try to I increase our ask uh, to several of the municipalities as well as look at other fundraising um, ideas. Great. Thank you, Kathleen. I'll open it up to committee. Um, I know you presented before, so we're pretty familiar, but if in case there's any questions. Nope, seeing none. Thank you. Um, the Victoria uh, Compost Education Centre, they were scheduled to make a presentation, but uh, they've got the flu as well, unfortunately. Um, so next is the West Shore Arts Council. Laura.
educational needs for our many events and college and into our children. And uh, of course, some of that help, overall money uh, is with Red Cross. Beyond those events, we have many other events which happen in nearby communities that also enhance the core arts experience. We are working currently on an experience for Town of Olympus in 2017. We would likely be partnering with other organizations for this event. Your funding does enable us to secure other grants from the province and federal, so it is very essential that we receive funding for our sustainability. Um, I'm going to leave you with a quote. <laughs> I think it's the last one, too. <laughs> the Arts Council looks forward to continuing the efforts of broadening awareness all taught communities of the West Shore. And I'd like to leave you with this quote. Art is not a part of life. It is not an addition to life. It is the essence of those pieces of art that make us who we are. So give us hope, so give us dreams, so provide the world with you, the very good one, and let it know again how you are. Thank you very much. Any questions? Thank you, Laura. Um, open it up to committee. The one thing I gotta say is I just love the passion in this room, holy smokes. No matter what organization you represent, uh, you, you can sure feel it. Um, that speaks volumes. Uh, the next item, the last item is uh, IACTI, and we've got uh, some information before us, and I think everyone's pretty familiar with uh, IACTI, as it's been a, a city committee for, for many years. Um, uh, but if anybody has any questions then, I know Cynthia, do you have something new? I just wanted to just briefly mention that, uh, of course, there are always minutes uh, posted from the meetings if anyone wanted to know um, the specific uh, details of what the committee's been up to. Great. Thank you. So as the, oh, Jason. Uh, yes, as the application has no budget with it and it is an intermunicipal advisory committee, what are, have the other municipalities been donating on a regular basis. Thank you. Sure. Uh, I believe that both Highlands and The Chosen have given $200 uh, per year uh, fairly uh, regularly. Uh, the City of Langford uh, supports specific bills uh, to be paid. They, they don't uh, provide the money up front to IACTI, but they cover bills that are submitted to them, so computer programming, et cetera. Uh, do, do you have any idea of the value of that uh, contribution? I think because the process is fairly onerous, it's been a fairly low value uh, of the last few years. Seeing no further questions, as the uh, Director of Finance indicated at the beginning of the meeting, we're uh, supposed to come up with a budget for, uh, for this um, grants and aid. Um, it is proposed, and I'd, I'd use it as a starting point of uh, the 27,600, which is a, a nominal increase, uh, the cost of living increase over last year's amount of uh, $27,050. If committee's okay um, with that as a starting point, I'm not seeing any objection. Um, so uh, I'll hand it over to uh, Andrea now, and uh, you can let us know what the. Uh, pardon? Oh, yeah. Before we begin, um, there are two line items that concern me a lot, which I don't feel as though I have enough information to be making a uh, legitimate decision on. One is Coast Collective for $12,000. I I've looked through their stuff and I do not understand why they're asking for that much and I don't know if I'm missing something or not. Uh, obviously, uh, in addition, the Community Dialogue and Resolution Societies moved from 2000 to 8500 and uh, I don't really understand. Um, that I tried to look through the paperwork on that too. Fort Rod Hill, I had a uh, I had asked questions ahead of time about if other municipalities were contributing to that, so I would I'd like to understand those as well. Andrea, okay. So with regard to the first two questions, um, we had hoped that Cindy Moyer would be here this evening uh, to do a presentation, and apart from the information that they have been provided to you, I do I do not have additional information on those those first two groups which was Coast Collective and Communica. In terms of the Fort Rod Hill, 
I did, uh, there's a new um, person who's basically looking after that, Bob Campbell, and I did contact him. And he did indicate that they get some money from uh, Michosin, Highlands, and Langford. And the total contributions that they get from those three agencies um, together are less than the um, $1,500. It was about $1,000 between the other three municipal governments, but I did contact him. Basically, um, if they look at what they get for donations and then whatever the difference is, I believe it's, is it Parks Canada? They make up the shortfall in the funding that's required. Okay, thank you. Um, so next steps. Yeah, so I wondered perhaps if we could have a motion from council um, indicating the amount of budget mm -hmm. that you would like to devote to grant and aid and you could perhaps uh, put the IACTI funds in separately. That is what we did last year. We basically came up with the amount of the budget that you were prepared to dedicate to grant and aid and the addition to that was $1,200 for IACTI. So if you were to look at this and say you'd like to make a motion of 27600 or some alternate figure. And the second thing you might want to do is decide whether you want to award it all this evening or if you'd like to keep back a small amount, which we have done sometimes in past years. Um, if someone comes forward later in the year and council feels there's a compelling case towards some additional monies. Okay, so uh, I didn't see any objection to the 27600 uh, So can I have a motion to uh, in that amount? Pardon me. Um, you mentioned um, Director Finance that last year was twenty-seven five plus twelve hundred. Correct. If we go twenty-seven six, that does not include the twenty-seven IACT. That's correct. That's right. Then so a second motion will be to add the twelve hundred for IACT. Just want to know yeah. how we're doing. Yeah. That's good clarification. So can I have a motion, Cynthia? So I would move that we set aside $27,600 for our provisional budget for the grant and aid envelope. Okay. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Carried? Before we move on to IACTI, um, what's the flavor of committee about uh, for holding back uh, a percentage to deal with um, late uh, submissions. Cynthia? I think that's a, a good idea to, to maybe have, you know, one or two thousand dollars in uh, set aside for a, a late application uh, that may come in that, that we had that situation come up last year uh, with the um, CRED funding, uh, Crime Reduction Education uh, Division of Pacific Centre Family Services was uh, in financial difficulty due to the um, uh, termination of a, a grant source. Uh, they have since found uh, further funding, uh, so that was just for bridge funding. Uh, that was a $500 amount last year that came up, so that's just one example of something that could come up. Did you want to make a motion um, in terms of holdback, and we can have some discussion? Sure. Uh, I'll just make a motion that we hold back $1,000 then. Uh, motion on the floor. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? It's opposed? It's carried. And then I'm looking for a motion uh, for IACD in the amount of $1,200. So moved. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? It's carried. All right. So you'll walk us through the process now of... Uh, Okay, and I may need some input from you. If you recall last year, we had some fairly spirited discussion on how we might do this, and we were thinking at the end the process worked fairly well last year, but council may want to uh, relook it. Basically, you have in front of you what I'm calling your score sheets, so that the amount of money that you will be spending this evening is the 27600 less the $1,000 holdback. So the magic number you'd like everything to add up to, and we have calculators handy, is $26,600. And for council's information, I have received separately by email from Councillor Trace, who could not be with us this evening, her list of votes. And I thought maybe we can add that after you've all had your chance, or it's whatever you'd like, Mr. Chair. I'm going to, um, we have the staff have this. I'm just going to. Our chair is aware of what we've received. 
Oh, okay. So you want us to take a do few you, minutes I don't then? know if you want to look at this now or if you want to do your votes oh. and then we'll just add this later. It's, it's whatever you'd like to do. Well, what we'll we did last year is we went through one by one and basically you voted an amount of money for each organization and then after you had done that, we added it up to see if we got close to the total amount you had to spend, right? So uh, I thought we discussed we were going to write down our amount and then you were going to collate them? And yeah, we can do that. Yeah. It's whatever council would like to do. And the other thing that you want to be clear about is we're going to have a range of figures here for each item. And I'm trying to remember what we did last year. Can anybody help me here? I do recall that last year we had motions on, on each item mm -hmm. and there was some discussion uh, a bit of wrangling, arm twisting around the table uh, as we um, uh, reach uh, agreement on on how to fund uh, more things than we, you know, it's always too many things at the candy shop. Um, but that's what I remember. What's uh, committee's desire? Do we want to go uh, each one or do we just want to, uh, to um mark it down on our sheet and have staff uh, tabulate them. Any preference? Cynthia? Well, there, there's a couple of items that I've heard questioned that um, I guess I have some opinion on and, and I guess I would like to have the opportunity to share those thoughts with the rest of you. Maybe you agree with me, maybe you don't. Um, so I would prefer if we, we had some discussion and then uh, did our tabulation just so that we're, um, you know, everyone has all the same information possible to work with. Me? Is there one, um, so you want to advocate on a particular item? Is that what you're uh, uh, There's a, just a couple of items that I heard questions about that I feel I may be able to add um, a little uh, bit of information too. I know there that Cindy, for example, was not able to uh, be here this evening. I don't know a great deal about her application, um, but I do know a lot about the different in initiatives that she has been involved with with the city previously. Okay. All right, I will speak on that then. Uh, just that um, there are a number of grants that we've applied for over the years that Cindy has been especially um, instrumental in making happen. And uh, in fact, many of our arts uh, endeavors uh, wouldn't uh, have gotten off the ground in the same way without her efforts. So uh, I do believe that there are some additional costs that uh, they uh, have this year with having moved to the new location that they've never had before uh, because they were uh, operating in, in the Pendry estate previously. Um, so they're looking for some assistance to subsidize their operational costs, which have gone up significantly as they establish themselves. Um, and I think that uh, is probably a worthwhile endeavor. It, it brings with it some uh, public um, opportunities for um, free community arts events. So I think that is in the public interest. And just to speak to the Communica Dialogue and Resolution Services Society, um, I do know that I looked into this last year when they applied uh, because I was curious as to what programming they were providing being as I had not had a presentation from them at the Family Court and Youth uh, custody um, committee and what I discovered at that time was that they were offering parenting um, skills courses similar to what is offered uh, downtown at the single parent resource center and a lot of um, supervised visitation for custody issues and uh, so quite a valuable um, service to have within your community so that people don't have to travel a long way to get that. And is there something else that I knew that was asked about? I think that's all that I knew about. Uh, just giving it, just giving it a little bit more thought. I'm thinking, um, you know, instead of 
um, marking our choices down, um, and then having that back and forth after and putting staff on the hot seat trying to figure out what the median and the average and all that jazz and having that discussion. We might as well just have the discussion on, on the line items. It might be relatively quick and come to a consensus and then move on to the next one. So um, do you want to, do you require a motion uh, uh, at, after each one or just at the end? I because think we might be over. I'm trying to okay. remember last year. Probably at the end. It was a motion on each one. Okay. It's just that uh, it, it might, might be a wee bit over, so I think maybe we should wait until the end, just, yeah, just in case. Okay. So the first item uh, is the Royal Bay uh, Secondary and Belmont Secondary a Dry Grad. Uh, last year, uh, with one school, they got $1,000. They're uh, asking for 4000 this year. Um, 2014, they had 1000 as well. So I'll open it up. Hey, Rob? Uh, I, would, I would suggest that we go with 2000 That way it's $1,000 per school. Uh, I, I do understand that Langford gives looks up to close to ten thousand on it, but I don't think we can afford full four thousand. So I would I, I would be comfortable with a thousand dollars per school, which would be a two thousand dollar grant. Okay. Is there any objection to that? I am not seeing any objection. Uh, so two thousand it is, and of course this is just um, uh, preliminary, right? So uh, our first blush. Uh, next is Big Brothers, Big Sisters of uh, Victoria. Uh, they're asking for $3,000. Uh, the last two years, uh, they have gotten two. Cynthia? I would recommend uh, that we uh, give them the same grant as last year, $2,000. Okay. I know they provide uh, valuable oversight uh, for volunteers to assist youth. Okay. Uh, any objection from committee? Seeing none, then, uh, oh, of course. Uh, thank you. You know, I, I, I agree. Uh, the, one, the one issue, though, that I'm always concerned about, and this is why I like to actually have people come and present, is I have no idea. Uh, I mean, I remember last year they had 11 families working out of Colwood, and it would have been nice to actually have Rhonda here today to find out if that number increased, decreased. I mean, if that number doubled, I'd be very comfortable uh, at looking at increasing it from 2,000 to 3,000. I have no idea and it doesn't say it in the report um, and so hence the reason why I, I was supportive of, of people actually being here okay. all right so I'll put down 2004 uh, for big brothers big sisters uh, next is bipolar oh, sorry I just wanted to on on the big brothers and big sisters it's my understanding they've maintained that number and increased so I don't know the exact increase but that's what I've been told uh, bipolar Disorder Society, um, they're asking for 2500 bucks. Uh, last year uh, was their first grant, uh, and that was 500 Anybody? Uh, Jason? Uh, yes, I had problems with this last year, and I still have problems with this. I don't think this is something, it's not a, a Colwood initiative per se. Um, and I really don't see the total benefit to the residents of Colwood out of this. So I have a proposal for zero dollars for this. Uh, I notice the only other city funding them is the city of Victoria to the tune of uh, $1,000. Okay. Thank you, Jason. Uh, Cynthia? Thanks. Um, they are West Shore centered. Um, I think it's great that uh, Victoria supported them. Uh, I'm okay with uh, uh, not supporting it this year uh, in that uh, um, I think that uh, wanted to support them getting started and getting out there and uh, I think they do do uh, a valuable service um, they have a very good reputation for helping to uh, uh, take the stigma out of mental health issues so I'm not hearing any objection to uh, uh, no grant this year for uh, bipolar, so I'll we'll put it as a zero. I've got my little calculator here too. Uh, next one is uh, Coast Col Collective Art Center. Uh, they have a twelve thousand dollar request last year. Um, they received a grant of two thousand. Um, Cynthia. So um, I would recommend it. I know that Cindy wanted to be here, and maybe she could have made a 
a more powerful argument, but I would like to support them with a grant of $4,000. Uh, they are struggling to help uh, create our, our downtown core and um, support uh, arts uh, in our community. And I'm sure that we'll see uh, value from that money with assistance to uh, securing grants and bringing uh, more commerce to the city of Cobalt. Committee? Rob? Um, Andrea, have you looked at this, or excuse me, Director of Finance, have you looked at this application? And I'm trying to find where their additional costs are. Because uh, what I don't understand is my understanding of their location has been donated uh, by the Wandsboros. I, that I can't answer. I have not managed to go through in detail all of these. However, I was intimately involved with the hotel um, property tax exemption. And I know that they are paying uh, lease payments there. Uh -huh. And that there were um, improvements that were provided, but they are definitely paying market rate on, I think it's about 3,000 square feet of lease. Um, I have had some preliminary discussions earlier with Cindy. Um, I was aware she would be applying for grant and aid, but I also think she might be looking at coming forward with possibly a permissive tax exemption because when we went through our discussions on the hotel, that particular space is not exempt, like the hotel is, but not that space where the arts collective is. So that might be something council wants to keep in mind is that, um, you know, that's, uh, that's up to you, but I'm just raising that as that may be another option or you may also be approached about um, a permissive exemption on the value of that space. Well, the, the only reason I ask is because if you look on their report, and I'm sorry, it's on the iPad, so I don't know what page would be hard copy wise, but it's, they're basically, it's page 10 on the report and it's revenues and expenses. Under facilities, lease payments is zero. For 2016? Well, I'm assuming it is. I mean, uh, that's their budget. So this says 2015. Um, well, uh, why am I looking at? Uh, I know there was no charge in 2016. So I got to keep going. Hold on. I got there. There we go. There we go. So that is facilities lease payments of $60,000. Okay, thank you. Jason? Uh, yeah, I also have a comment on that. I noticed that their expenses went from $232,000 in 2015 to $321,000 in 2016. That's a pretty much a 50%, 100%, no, 50% increase in, in their spending over a one-year period. Uh, and so 60000 of that, of course, is taken by facilities and lease payments, but that still leaves... Uh, close to $100,000 in, in increases. So I'm very concerned with the amount of money they're asking for from Colwood. Uh, I had written down to give them the same grant as last year because they didn't really provide information on what extra Colwood would be getting out of this other than paying rent to the hotel. Uh, I don't see any new benefit for the extra hundred thousand dollars so I could support the four thousand I guess but uh, if, if they apply when they apply again I would like to see an awful lot more detail on that kind of increase anybody else so it's a starting point anyways the four thousand seem to be reasonable because they can be revisited once we get down to the bottom anyway so is your hair okay uh, nope, I'm gonna it's, I'm gonna be bald by the end of it. <laughs> okay, so so far we're up to uh, eight thousand. If anyone's tallying the numbers, uh, next is the Communica Dialogue and Resolution Society. Um, they asked for eighty five hundred dollars uh, last year. We gave them two thousand previous year. Fifty five hundred. Um, Cynthia. Thanks, and just to refresh your memory, the year before the $5,500 was a permissive tax exemption, which uh, we determined was, it's more cost effective to offer a grant in aid uh, because there are some additional advertising costs associated with the permissive tax exemption. Um, 
So my recommendation would be the same as last year, that we um, provide a $2,000 grant. Rob? Um, sorry, I'm going to put finance on the spot, and they're probably, it's okay if you just say it, I don't know. But I know this, uh, I know this, because of this used to be a permissive tax exemption, do we know what their, their property tax value was? Because I believe it was 8500 uh, the year we did give them the per per uh, permissive tax exemption, so I no, I do not know that off yeah. the top. Okay, any uh, objection to uh, the two thousand dollar request, Rob? Um, I I'm very comfortable actually. If I knew what the permissive tax or, or excuse me, what the property tax was, I'd be actually very comfortable giving them exactly half of what it was. So, um, and the reason being that the whole idea was that they were within the community of Colwood, and so that um, that we were able to, and it's you know, we're still getting tax dollars from them because they, because they were actually paying property tax into this. Um, so, you know, if I was to make the assumption, let's just assume that their property tax was eight thousand, I would be very comfortable to offer them a four thousand dollar. So, through the chair, if you'll just excuse me, I can go and look that up. Will you perhaps move on to the next item if that suits you? Well, maybe, uh, before you do that, you may want to check with the rest of council. Yeah. Because there's rest of the admin. Yeah, yeah I will. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't so have to ask. Not, you might not have to look at I don't have to ask uh, council. I, if I'm assuming problem. that's what it is. But if we go to their budget for September 2015 to August 2016, uh, in the right column, expenditures, property, taxes, it says $5,500. There you go. There's your answer. Yeah, so I'd be happy to go half of that. Twenty-five hundred. Okay, I, I, I've got Jason and then uh, Cynthia, and then we should probably figure out. Jason. Again, this is one that uh, I honestly don't think it's the municipality's business to be in. Uh, my writing down was zero. Um, and I think I will stick with that. Okay. All right, uh, Cynthia? I was just going to say I'm more comfortable with the $2,000 uh, level, which is providing uh, consistent support for programming that supports uh, families and youth in our community and nearby communities as well. It's certainly not limited to Colwood. Um, I just... Just in order, I, I've done my, counted my numbers already, so <laughs> to stay within our envelope. <laughs> okay, great, thank you. So uh, 2,000 seems to be the consensus. We're okay with that? Okay. Crisis intervention and uh, public information, asking for 1,500. We gave them 1,000 uh, last year and 1,200 in 2014. Uh, committee comfortable with the uh, ask uh, or the $1,000? Uh, Cynthia? I'm comfortable with the $1,000. Okay. Committee? No problem, okay, so that'll be $1,000. Fort Rod Hill, that's ought to be good. Rob, <laughs> uh, last year was fifteen hundred dollars. Uh, I I have always had an issue with the fact that we're paying more than uh, anyone else. Uh, I'm happy to uh, suggest that we pay five hundred uh, towards the Canada Day celebration, but uh, I just don't. Just because it happens to be in the municipality of Colwood, uh, there's as much Langford residents and Machosan residents and so on who go to Fort Rod Hill to celebrate as, as Colwood residents. So uh, I would be supportive of, of paying the most still, but it would be 500 and not 15. Yeah, it's interesting that uh, the federal government makes up the, mm -hmm. the shortfall, which I was not aware of in the past, so appreciate mm -hmm. that. Uh, Cynthia? It definitely. Um, is annoying that when we send them the money, they ask us to make the check out to the Receiver General of Canada. <laughs> um, but uh, with that said, uh, they provide uh, tremendous support uh, venues for numerous fundraising activities. There is, um, it is in Colwood, uh, 
uh, it's a great draw for Colwood and it's an important partnership and going back to 2002 um, they were asking for a thousand dollars and getting it so I think fifteen hundred dollars is a fair um, support for a community partner okay anyone else uh, Rilha Thank you. I agree with both Rob and Cynthia's points, but I think I will support the $1,500. And I say that because the years that I've gone has been spectacular, and I would just like us to continue that. However, maybe we can look into this for next year to make sure it's equal. Thank you. So I've got two at 15, one at five. Any objection to the 15 at the moment? Well, yeah. Besides you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll put down 15 for now and uh, see where it goes. Um, bike to Work asked for 15. Got 15 last year, the last uh, two years. Um, are people okay with, the, uh, with that amount? Yeah, seeing no objection. It'll be 1,500. Uh, Volunteer Society, uh, Volunteer Victoria, asked for a thousand and received that amount the last two years. Any, any issue? Seeing consensus on that amount, that'd be a thousand bucks. Juan de Fuca Performing Arts uh, so, uh, Arts Center Society. Uh, this is a new one for us. They've asked for uh, twenty-four hundred dollars. Um, committee, your worship. <coughs> But they're not really new. This is, you know, the entity that we um, took and put a lot of energy and a lo and and did a lot of work with uh, to determine what was feasible within the region and where that would land. So this is continuing that work, and it's a small ask um, to ensure that these guys stay alive and working towards that end. Great. Thank you, Jason. And Rob? Uh, before we go anywhere with that, I'm just trying to figure out what other municipalities are contributing to this. I, I can't find the number anywhere in the. Um. Thank you. Given that, I would support the full request. Okay, thank you. Rob? And I hate to do this because Judith is gonna hate me, uh, but I, I, I'm not supportive of it, and, I, and I'll explain the reason why. Uh, we've gone through this, and we've gone through this process several times, and I just do not see the financial viability of a, uh, a performing arts center uh, in the West Shore. I wish there was, believe me, I do. Um, I know Langford has tried to look at doing something with an arena and a thing which didn't work at all, or I still don't think it will work at all. And, um, you know, the discussions we've had with Royal Bay um, have not borne fruit. And I'm just afraid that uh, I, I just, I don't feel comfortable with it. So, um, and I, I know it's sad, but I don't, I don't, I, I'm not supportive of the process. Okay. Um, I, I should have been reading out um, Terry's, uh, Councillor Trace's amount uh, as well. Uh, she's supporting it for uh, 500. Um, so what's the uh, committee's pleasure? Got a couple at 2400, Cynthia? Um, I'm in at the 2400 uh, because I think that if there is going to be um, more vibrant uh, performing arts, uh, possibilities in the West Shore is going to take some dedicated people. Um, I've worked with Judith before and uh, she's been known to pull the rabbit out of the hat from time to time. Uh, Miss Solar Callwood, <coughs> Energy Bunny. Um, and and I'm, I think for uh, a year's investment at $2,400 to uh, support volunteers um, to carry on work that that the city very much supported and started is a reasonable request. Yeah. All right, 
So there seems to be somewhat of a consensus for the 2400, or at least a majority. Uh, we'll start with that, move on. So far we're up to uh, 17,400 for those of us that are keeping a tally. Um, Royal Canadian, Canadian Legion is asking for 2,000. So they've gotten that amount in 2015 and 14. But uh, Jason? Yes, I would support that again in the full amount. Uh, the Remembrance Day ceremonies are very well attended and uh, very well run. Uh, it's the one time we get a chance to show respect to our veterans, of which we have a large number in Colwood. Uh, so I would support the full amount. Thank you. I'm not seeing any objection there, so we'll uh, put that down for 2000 uh, Vancouver Island uh, South Film Commission asking for 1000 Last two years it was $500 a piece. Um, Your Worship, and then uh, Cynthia. I would like to support their request at a thousand. Um, if you guys, if you recall, um, in hosting one of the shots or s or setups for um, one of the productions this last couple of years, they came to us with a donation um, that virtually was our money back um, in that regard. And so, you know, I think a thousand is warranted. We do see benefit as these um, film productions come into our area. I know that there's more slated coming our direction and uh, we'll be, you know, seeing the excitement of, of spotting celebrities in the community again, even if it wasn't Leonardo DiCaprio the last time. <laughs> oh, who says? <laughs> Okay, uh, uh, Terry also uh, says a thousand dollars in uh, her email here. Anybody have an objection to a thousand bucks initially? Seeing none, we'll put that down then. Thank you. Um, Victoria Compost Education Center asking for ninety two hundred and fifty dollars. This is their first uh, grant request. Uh, Cynthia. I think it would be um, very um, good to have a community uh, workshop in Colwood. It certainly uh, has been very much centered on their Victoria location before, and that seems to be the reason that they're looking uh, to have uh, this grant. Um, I can't support the 9,000, um, but I thought $1,500 would go a long ways towards getting workshop put on in Colwood. 1500 uh, Terry had mentioned 1000 Um I think we have room at the moment for, for 1500 if I'm looking at my numbers correctly. So we can start with that if there's no objections. Okay, so we'll put that down as 1500. Um, and West Shore Arts Council is asking, asking for 5000. Uh, last year it was 3000 that they were granted and 2014 was 5000. Um, it's people's pleasure. Um, Terry did uh, write down 2,500 as uh, as a suggestion. Does anybody? Uh, yeah, Cynthia. I was thinking 3,000, uh, the same as they had last year. Any objections to 3,000? No. Okay, so we'll put down the 3,000. So right now, if I, my math is correct, we're actually uh, a wee bit under budget, yeah. which is cool. 29,900. Pardon? 24,900. Yeah. Did I say 29? Yeah. 24,900. It's right here. God. Okay, so um, <laughs> now we're going to deal with that in budget. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, council happy with with those numbers? And then there's that Aliak on top. I th Jason? 
Um, I would suggest then, since we didn't reach the 27.6 that we had agreed on, that the remainder of that 27.6 be put in on hold and uh, okay. be available for grants should they come in late. Yep. I think that's an excellent suggestion, Jason. Yeah, awesome. Okay. So if you'd like me to just sum up for the record then. So council approved a budget of 27,600. In addition to that, there is $1,200, which is a line item for I'd act here, okay? But of the 27,600, we have awarded uh, 24,900, which leaves $2,700 left over for any additional uh, grants that council may wish to award. And if council agrees with that, um, we could have a motion to uh, summarize what you've approved. Okay. So we have a motion um, um, summarizing the, uh, the recommendations that um, this committee has made. I think everyone's pretty clear on the amounts. Uh, any discussion? Uh, Cynthia? And that would include the uh, $2,700 uh, uh, kind of reserve. Sure. Yeah. I just wanted to check our numbers because my math added up different. I had it added up to 26.4. So it, maybe we should just read out the amounts just from the top, okay? okay. So Belmont Secondary, Dry Grad, $2,000. Big Brothers and Sisters, $2,000. Bipolar, zero. Coast Collective, 4000 Communica Dialogue, 2000 Crisis Intervention, 1000 Fort Rod Hill, 1500 Bike to Work, 1500 Greater Victoria Volunteer Society, 1000 Juan de Fuca Performing Arts Centre Society, 2400 Royal Canadian Legion, 2000 Vancouver Island South Film Festival, 1000 Victoria Compost Education Center, 1500 and West Shore Arts Council, 3000 And we do have the Excel spreadsheet revved up, and uh, that is 24900 Good. Okay. So we have a motion on the floor if there's no further discussion. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Wow. That was fantastic. Um, yeah, so the next uh, next meeting, actually, it's recommended that we add another one um, for February the 15th um, to discuss. Would you like me to just yes. briefly? Yes, so this evening we did shorten the agenda up by not having some of the presentations that we had last year, and we do need to have those folks present to council, such as the Juan de Fuca Recreation Society with their budget, which is about a million dollars, the Greater Victoria Library, budget and we may also include in there um, these aren't grants so much as uh, what do we call them anyways there's the chamber and I also would like to do a bit of a high level budget overview to council and I'm suggesting that we do it on Monday February 15th that would normally be a fact committee meeting but otherwise it's just going to make our budget meetings we just can't get this all in when I looked at some of the other things. So we, we didn't do it all tonight, so we'll have to uh, split it up a bit. Start time? Uh, 5.30. 5.30. And we'll have our Val St. Valentine's Day hangovers happening, and we'll be ready to go. Uh, yeah, and uh, staff are aware, and they will probably be rescheduling that. Okay. Uh, family days on the 8th. It's the week before? It's the week before. Well, that's the Ontario. Yeah. So you're... <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Okay, so... Uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, motion to adjourn? Moved by Jason. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Thank you very much.